Okay, today we are going to rebuild, we're going to disassemble the top half of a Bridgeport variable speed head. This is a horse and a half. It's the same either whether it's a horse and a half or a two. Uh, every tool I'm using you can purchase through us. So let's get started. First thing you do, you have your power on. Now this head will be very noisy. You turn the power on and you, and you run it down the lowest speed. Okay, at this point, you will turn your power off, and if it's on your machine, you will lock out your power. And now we start disconnecting. your power to your motor. Now you can take your drum switch loose. I always have a basket to throw all my parts in, so I'm going to wash them in a little while. Nine times out of ten, it's a flathead screwdriver it's holding the switch, switch on. Okay, next we are going to take the bottom cap underneath the motor off. There are three socket head cap screws that are holding it on. 532nd Allen wrench. You will not discard these screws. You're going to be using two of these. screws and there are holes in the bottom of your pulley. In a perfect world you would put these up and thread them up and tighten them up. Well if you heard how loud this head is this disc is completely sprung so they will not fit. But normally you could take your two of your three screws, put them up in here, tighten it up and compress your spring. In this case we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay once everything's off you have that off take your front and run it up to the highest speed. With no power on, all we're doing is relieving pressure off of the front pulley. You can take a pry bar or a long screwdriver if you can get it in here. And horse and a half are tighter than two horses. You want to push the belt up. If you can, just push the belt all the way up, take all the pressure off that you can. Now you will want to mark your front of this so when you put this back together, I use a, a spring loaded punch. Just put a, put a mark up here so I know where the front is. We will be taking this cap off to help relieve pressure. Sometimes this cap will come right off and other times you need to pry it off or you may have to use these screws to jack it up. See these three holes here. These are to take these if you need to. Put them in here and jack it up. A lot of times they're completely full and compacted and almost impossible to get anything into. So. I have to take a screwdriver. And try to pry it up. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I guess I'll be using the screws to jack this one out. So take the three screws you removed out of the cap and you will use them to, as jack screws, jack this thing up. Okay, 
Okay, so you can see we're starting to get it up to a point where I should be able to get a couple pry bars under this thing. Pry bars under here. Pop it up. There should be a wavy spring washer under here. Obviously, this one did not have it in there. Now you can take the same two pry bars and real quick and just pop the mirror. inch open end or remove the motor. There are two bolts on each one on each side of the motor. Okay, like I said before, if you had the pulley compressed this would come off a lot easier. This one will not it's not going to come off too easy. So, what you're going to do, you're going to get up here, grab your motor, and ramp it backwards. You're going to spring it. Once you get it off, take it, set it aside. Okay, our next step. There's a snap ring right on the top of the front spindle pulley hub. off real quick. And down inside there, on most of them there are two socket head cap screws. This one is very old, there's only one. But there are two socket head cap screws holding the tilt plate on. They're sometimes in very tight, so I a lot of times will need to use a wrench to break it free. These cap screws also have a little collar on them. They're what go through the tilt plate. Okay, we are now ready to take the front cap loop the front cap. If you had a two horsepower you'd have a plastic cover on top which would have two flathead screws you take off first. This being a horse and a half does not have those. So it's a matter of taking these four socket head cap screws off. Once you have this off you notice it's just sitting here dangling. That's all we're going to do. We're not taking this all loose right here. We're now ready to take off your top belt housing. Four socket head cap screws on the top. And one socket head cap screw right in the back, right underneath the very back of it. Sometimes they're not there, so don't be distressed if you get there and it's not in there. Now, sometimes this will pick right up, sometimes they're pinned. This one appears to be pinned, so you will take a rubber mallet, we use the trusty cook, pop it loose, and now you see how we took it loose and I left the tilt plate attached. It's no need to take this apart. You can see how bad this one is that this top cap is not even on here correctly. But anyway, once you get that off, you'll take off your front movable disc assembly. Your quality drive belt, missing teeth. Now we are ready to the next step is, you see this is 15 16 nut. It's critical you take this off while you still have use of your brake. 
Kind of reach in, hold the brake, get your big 15 16 wrench. And take it loose. And some of them are very tight. Now we are ready to take off the pancake housing. Same wrench as you had on your top housing, four screws. One here, 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 and here from the bottom. Okay. Now this, again, may be pinned, so usually I just take the palm of my hand and I'm tapping up. And as you're turning it, you're tapping in an upward motion, and you can see we're coming off the belt. Now once you're off the belt, you're free. I just flip it upside down, because I'm going to take my belt. You see the two socket head cap screws. This is a critical part, because a lot of people will look at this housing, and they'll see this stamp ring and think you take this off and pry it off there. You do not. It comes apart from the bottom. Two socket head cap screws are quarter twenties. Now again, take your rubber mallet. Just hold this thing up about an inch. There you go. Now there is your pancake housing, there's your brake shoes, you want to get your brake shoes, this is where you're at right now. Brake shoes, brake springs, everything's right here. Here is the housing with the brake bearing cap, which you can see this brake bearing cap is broken. But at this point now is where we can tear, we'll tear that apart later. Okay, now we're to the point where you have your pulley. Take two pry bars. One on each side of your um, timing belt pulley. Top of Boom. This washer should not be there. Now there is a aluminum cover on the top guarding your bull gears. It's a socket, a flathead screw. And sometimes these are very difficult to get off. For some reason, people think this should be the tightest thing on this, in this head. There's your bull gear. And as you can see, this quality, there's a metal chip in here already. <laughs> so, but this is the bull gear area. Two socket head cap screws holding on your your bat your small bowl gear. The cover over the top, so take those loose. Usually it doesn't come right off, so I use a pry bar. I take my bowl gear down if I can. Get it there like that. Then you can take two pry bars. Just pop this right off. Sometimes they come out all together, sometimes they don't. This is the, uh, this came out in one piece. Usually I just take a mallet. This did not come apart well at all. The bearing stayed in here, which shouldn't have. But anyway, there's your small bowl gear. The bearing stayed in there, which will present another problem in a little bit. <laughs> All right, now we're going to remove the large bull gear. On the right side, you have your speed change panel plate right here. There are two socket head cap screws right here. They need to come out. Take the front one out first. Then put the perfect world, you put it up to high. This one is broken. Once you get them both out, 
you're going to pull this handle assembly out completely. You see how it took all the pressure off of the bull gear. So you can either use pry bar, sometimes you can get hold of it with your hand, and you're gonna lift it up. Many times there's a little lip on the top of your spindle, as you can see how this is worn down. So it takes a couple attempts to get this off. You have the disc, there's a ring underneath here, but this is your large bull gear assembly. Three springs underneath here. Now this particular one here has the small bearing did not come out, so we use a slide hammer to remove it. We have a slide hammer. I made this out of an old key. Sometimes this is a very large pain in the roof. Okay, now we have this empty. There's a bunch of grease in here. Just take, just clean out all your grease as best you can, because you will be putting new grease in it. Afraid to get your immune system built up, get your fingers in there. Not be perfect, you just want most of it out of there. Now, you notice that there's still the, the pins are here. You really don't want those pins in there when you're putting them back together. So just take a hammer, tap them out. Now we are going to take the three nuts on the bottom that are holding this bull gear housing on. They are 99% of the time. They're an 11 16th wrench. Occasionally you get one that's a little smaller and you just take it loose. Sometimes they come apart easy, sometimes they fight you. This is an old one. It still had the um, original cotter pins in it. You're not going to reuse them. I just turn it until they break off. off with the washer. Not the washer. We have them off. Washer felt, this lifts us straight up, and there you go. This is the last component. You now have the top half disassembled. I'm going to disassemble. Okay. I'm going to take the motor pulley off of the motor. And because this one was on with the, uh, I couldn't compress the, the bushings on it. We're going to have to do this the old fashioned way. So this is a two person job. So get your helper. One person will push the spring down while the other person pops the snap ring. This is a, uh, not a snap ring with the holes. This is more of a sir clip on this one. So hold it down. There you go. Just let it up loose up there. And you can see, oh, this is such a fine one. There we go. Now we have your motor, your pulley, everything's apart, you're ready for your top half rebuild.